Hey everyone and welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So as I mentioned in yesterday's video, all social security beneficiaries, whether you're a retiree, SSI or SSDI beneficiary, you're going to be receiving some type of an increase in 2024 thanks to the cost of living adjustment. However, there could potentially be another $3,787 on the table. We're going to be going over why if lawmakers can take action on this one change, which quite frankly, just makes the most sense. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm, and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Okay, so diving right into today, first we're gonna be talking about the Medicare Part B premiums, and we actually have some good news with this. So according to CNBC, the Medicare Part B standard premium is going to increase by $9.80 per month in 2024. And you might be thinking like, Josh, why is this good news? Why is it good news that the premium is going to be increasing almost $10 in 2024? Well, that's because of the fact that we actually thought it might be increasing 15 by $15 uh, next year per month because of the new Alzheimer's drug that they had just approved. We had previously expected it to be right around $10, but we expected the Alzheimer's drug to be an additional $5. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, $10 versus $15, we would much rather just take the $10 increase. So once again, according to CNBC, the standard monthly premiums for Medicare Part B will increase by $9.80 per month in 2024. According to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, that means the standard monthly premium will go up to $174.70 in 2024, an increase from $164.90 in 2023. The new rate is in line with previous projections by Medicare trustees, which had estimated a $174.80 standard monthly premium for next year. The annual deductible for Medicare Part B will be $240 in 2024, a $14 increase from the $226 annual deductible in 2023. So unfortunately, yes, those deductibles are also going to be going up another $14. And once again, of course, as far as the Medicare Part B premium goes, again, it's good news because it's only going up 10 versus 15. But of course, it's bad news because we would not like for this to go up at all because at the end of the day, even though we are receiving a cost of living adjustment increase in 2024, that's going to be reduced thanks in part or not thanks in part to these increases in the Medicare Part B premiums. Now, as far as some other potential increases go, we actually have bills in Washington regarding this, where once again, if they were to enact these changes over the years, we would see much higher increases as time goes by. So according to the Senior Citizens League, 80% of retirees want better inflation protection. And this could go for SSI and SSDI beneficiaries as well. So according to the Senior Citizens League, the 3.2% Social Security cost of living adjustment is well above the 2.6% average over the past two decades. Still, according to a new survey by the Senior Citizens League, 80% of retirees think Congress should beef up inflation protection by providing a COLA that more closely reflects inflation experienced by older adults. Some senior advocates, including the Senior Citizens League, have proposed using a senior CPI to determine the annual COLA. Mary Johnson said, quote, if that were the law today, the COLA in 2024 would be almost a percentage point higher, 4% versus the 3.2% just announced by the Social Security Administration. So pretty much if they were to be using the CPIE, which is an alternative measure of inflation, which much more closely tracks the goods and services that retirees are spending on versus you know younger Americans. Instead of the 3.2% COLA, it would actually be a 4% COLA, which given it wouldn't be a much higher increase than what we're receiving, it still would be higher. And this is something that definitely adds up over the years and something that we're gonna dive into in just a moment. So they go on to say that Johnson bases that estimate on the rate of increase in the consumer price index for the elderly, the most recent data that was released yesterday. Failing to adequately protect Social Security benefits from the effects of inflation can lead to a loss of buying power and benefits over time and lower growth in Social Security benefit income over the course of a retirement. Older and disabled Social Security recipients spend their money differently than younger working adults. 
Retirees tend to spend a bigger share of their income on housing and medical costs, two spending categories which tend to rise more quickly than overall inflation. Meanwhile, younger working adults tend to spend more on commuting costs and energy while spending considerably less on health care than older adults. According to the annual research by the Senior Citizens League, Social Security benefits have lost about 36% of buying power since 2000. And then the article at this point kind of goes into comparing the CPIE versus the CPIW and what the difference would be. So a new analysis by Mary Johnson comparing the two indexes with the proposal to use the higher of the two indicates that using this approach would provide greater inflation protection and higher benefit growth over time. When COLA increases under current law are compared with the COLAs calculated using the higher of the CPIW or CPIE over the past 10 years, the analysis found that an average Social Security benefit of $1,294 in 2014 would grow to $1,692.20 in 2024 using the CPIW. Using the higher of the two benefits, the $1,294 benefit in 2014 would be significantly higher, $1,749.80 in 2024, or $57.60 more per month than under current law. In addition, the analysis found that this calculation method would have provided an additional $3,787.80 more in Social Security income from 2014 through the end of 2024. And then we can see the chart up on the screen here. And keep in mind, in most years, even though the CPIE is higher than the CPIW, there are certain years where the CPIW is actually higher than the CPIE. These are years in which the, gas, the price of gas is usually a little bit higher. So if we look up at the chart up on the screen there, we can see that in 2022, the CPIW was 5.9% when compared to the 4.8% CPIE. And then the following year in 2023, the CPIW was 8.7% versus the CPIE of 8%. So that's something that we definitely need to be careful about. If we use only the CPIE method, there are definitely going to be some years where the CPIE is actually uh, it's going to be lower than the CPIW. So it'd be much better, obviously, if we choose which is higher between the two metrics, whether it's the CPIE or whether it's the CPIW, and whichever is higher should be what the cost of living adjustment is for people receiving Social Security benefits. Now, once again, like I mentioned earlier on in today's video, there's actually a bill in Washington right now that would make this change. And that is being introduced by John Garamendi. He happens to be a Democrat. So you can see up there on the screen that Garamendi reintroduces the Fair Cola for Seniors Act. And this legislation would increase Social Security benefits for seniors and people with disabilities. And you can see it up there on congress.gov as well. Right now, the bill does have 35 co-sponsors. However, if you look who they are and which party they stand with, they all stand with the Democratic Party, meaning that we don't have any Republicans on board with this bill, which also pretty much means at this point in time, they really wouldn't have much of a chance of passing it without having any type of Republican support. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Would you like to see some change as far as the colas go to make sure that they keep up with inflation much more than what they're currently doing? But that's all we have for today's video. Definitely hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next video.